And after that, I had to, to make actual actions, okay? Yeah. And at this point, I decided to go uh, functional event sourcing uh, for several reasons that I will not say all the reasons uh, uh, <laughs> now, but one, one of the, um, uh, some, something, uh, uh, what, one of the reasons is that, uh, of course, I wanted the game to be distributed because here I, you, you've seen me uh, playing on a single computer, but of course the goal was to play with remote people. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to, to have the synchronization between, um, between players. Yeah. And, and uh, I knew that uh, uh, using event sourcing probably could be simpler and I will explain how it works and all that. And the other reason is that uh, for uh, modeling the game, it was uh, very nice because in this game, actually you have very few actions. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they are mostly uh, two actions, which are, which are uh, move. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then to move, you just say, I move along this path uh, to go to this uh, crossroad. And uh, the other action is when you play cards. So you have a variety uh, of different cards that you can, you can uh, actually uh, play, but um, uh, the action is to play a card. Mm -hmm. And the last thing that you can do is that you can end your, your turn uh, or discard the card, but it came later in the game. And uh, I didn't think uh, at first about that. But the outcome of each of these actions can be very different. So I will show why. When, when I move, uh, usually I will um, draw a fence behind me. Mm -hmm. But when I move and I go back to a field, it also takes the field. Okay? And you can also take cards. And when you move along your own fields, you don't draw a fence. Right. So it's also different. Okay? So this is the same action but different results, which is quite interesting because uh, using event sourcing, it's very easy to actually mo uh, model this um, in, a, uh, in a nice way. And after that, for synchronization and all that, it was very efficient and it was also very easy to, to, to implement in, uh, in Fable. So I, I will start to, to explain how I write my uh, event sourcing. Yeah, because the, just for people that are not, for some exactly. reason, um, you know, uh, familiar with event sourcing, yeah, uh, it's nice to be able to send the set of past events to the other client, and yeah. if you're running the same code, it'll have the same effect, and so you can have synchronized boards very easily. Yeah, so so yeah, the, um, uh, here I will start to explain how how I uh, I do with uh, event sourcing, and actually my 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 reason for event sourcing is not about uh, performance, it's not about uh, it's not about uh, storage. It's not about all that. The thing is first to um, uh, separate uh, decision from uh, actually computing state. Mm -hmm. okay. So I go back to my whiteboard. And um, so the thing I do is that usually to what we do in system is something like that. We have something that arrived and we have, okay, let's admit, uh, we have a method with parameters and the methods uh, do things and have states and we try to persist the state somewhere else and, and it can return some output. But inside we have some ifs, we have some state change and all that is not very clear and yeah. uh, well separated. And, and uh, uh, we're used to write code like that, so it's not very a problem, but I, I will propose a, a different way and a far more um, a constrained way. It, will, it really seems constrained when, when you look at it like that, but uh, after that, we will see why it's very interesting. So we can create a box and uh, we will uh, actually uh, decide inside and what what is a, a decision to decide 
we want to decide, we, we, we receive a command. So I will just put a command here. I type the thing so that it's easier for people to read. To, yep. <laughs> no problem. Because I know that my handwriting is very bad. And <laughs> same with mine. <laughs> I, the thing is that if I do that, uh, you have a command and you can decide. You can decide only on the parameter of the command, but uh, how can you decide something different based on what happened before? So you need some history here. Mm -hmm. And often, uh, I will call it state, but I will explain what it can, state is already an optimization, but uh, let's, say, let's say state, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, given what you asked me to do on my current state, I can say what happens. And we will just return an event list like that. Uh, and we will make it a, a pure function. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea of a pure function is that um, the output value uh, will only, there is no other effect that the output value and the output value will only depend on the input value. Okay, so to, for the same value of command and state, I will always get the same event list, always and there will be nothing else that will happen, okay? So uh, this is a pure decision. You ask me to do that when I'm in this state, this is the result, okay? Yeah, we have a similar thing that, that we uh, started to do is basically add the state alongside the command and uh, that's sometimes uh, looked at as a read model or what in, in event modeling we call yeah. a view. And so yes, we just make it another parameter in the command and yeah. uh, that way you have uh, one thing that's coming in <laughs> that you can yeah. evaluate. Like I, I will show for why I, I, I put two, two things here. Yeah. And uh, the, the thing is that, um, uh, so this state uh, could even be an uh, event list. This is a valid exactly. mm -hmm. state. So um, don't take it too, 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 too exclusively. Exactly. But then the thing we do usually is uh, this one. So to get a state, what we do is that we take events and we say, okay, we take one event, we take a state, and we, we have an evolve function, okay? And it will return a new state. Yeah. And this will also be a, a pure function. So yes. that will take uh, an event in a state and return a new state, which is not modifying the old one, it's just returning a new one. Exactly. And in my case, it will be very important for the rest of the of the development that it will not mute it. Okay, so this is a new one. People will think this is highly inefficient and all that, and uh, we can discuss that after. But it will be. And to 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 close the loop, what we do is that once we have a new state, we will use it for the next co the next command, and we will use it for the next evolution. Yes. Okay. So the simplest uh, evolve function is to take the previous list of the event, which is initially empty, and just adding the event to that list. Yeah. Okay. So this is a valid way to make event sourcing. You can take the list of event, append the event, and take the full uh, list and pass it to the decide function that will take the current command on all the past events and find the output. Mm -hmm. Open. It can be a bit uh, simpler to, to reason about and uh, to implement and to follow. And you can uh, compress your history as a state, which That's will contain it. some values that you're interested in. in. In my case, I write a single evolve function, but it's also possible to create one evolve function per uh, um, uh, command and decide uh, what evolution function you want to apply depending on what the what part of the past you're interested in it for each command yeah but in my case uh in my case in the case but usually the simplest way to to do is uh, this one and in my case uh, most of the state is uh, poten potentially uh, used for every command 
So you have to know about the position, the, the bounds, you have to know about your uh, opponents, uh, you have to know about your field and all that to take any decision. So all the state is uh, valuable and all the state is also um, in a good shape to display. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. But it's totally possible to have uh, several evolved functions because you can also do something like here, uh, take you up and make a projection and uh, doing things like uh, state. This is another state, but you can just output it state. And then you can have an other state that you can use for projection. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when when I the the idea of uh, of uh, functional uh, event sourcing is that now you have very simple uh, thing here, which are uh, decide and evolve. You just need an initial state to input here. Yeah. And uh, input here for the first call and. After that, everything is simple. So, I think everyone coming out of school that studied finite state machines will, you know, enjoy yeah. this pattern quite a lot because it's, uh, you know, you know where you're going. Um, it's exactly. clear. There's no ambiguity uh, at any point. So the power of, you know, pure functions are, it's excellent for games because you have to follow yeah. the rules. <laughs> so to, to start, to start uh, your game logic, you just uh, do this, uh, type comment equal and then uh, you have nothing to do so uh, for now you can just say unit okay so this is carrying of void in uh, in f sharp mm -hmm. type event unit type state equal initial state so this is a kind of enum that has a, a single value which is initial state mm -hmm. okay and uh, so my initial state value is this value. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, from here, I can uh, bootstrap my code by just saying, okay, let's decide. And I will take a uh, command. And uh, I will take a state. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I will return an event list. And uh, the simplest implementation that compiles and is uh, valid uh, given the, the signature of this function is just returning a, an empty list. Mm -hmm. This is a valid de uh, uh, decision function that actually never decide anything. Okay? That's right. Cool. We can start from here. And the second one is the evolve function. And the evolve function takes a state, which is a state and an event, uh, which is an event, and will return the state. And the valid signature for this function is a function that just returns its input state. And this is an evolution function, which says whatever my state, if something happened, I don't change. Right. Okay. The cool thing is that from here, this is already event sourcing, functional event sourcing that I can run. Okay. Mm -hmm. For instance, if I do something like, um, uh, so to, to, I, I can uh, take my uh, initial state, okay, and uh, make a decision, but for instance, uh, decide with my only uh, command, which is the value of unit, okay, mm -hmm. and it will uh, actually return uh, an empty list. Right. And given a list of events, I can uh, use fold, list.fold, so I can take a, an empty list of events and list.fold. So I will explain list.fold just after that. Uh, evolve uh, with my uh, initial state, like that. And uh, it will also work. It will just return uh, the initial state. But the thing is that it's already taking my list of events and try it. So it will, when you would use list.fold, it will take the initial state that is here. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the first event in the list called the evolve function, get mm -hmm. a new state, take the second, evolve, uh, the second event, 
take yeah. the second, uh, the, the, for the state we just computed, use it for the evolved function and doing it uh, again and again until you get the final state, okay? Right. And the cool thing with that is we are, we are not talking about replay. We are not talking about um, uh, applying things. We're just talking about computation. We compute a state. So this yes. is a, a simple calculation. So there is no uh, uh, fear of replaying, producing some side effect. Everything is immutable. There is no side effect. So I can run it again and again, and it will always return the same values. And I know that I don't change anything. I just get the output values, OK? Yeah. This is cool. And then after that, we can do things like move off with the movement, OK? And here, we can do something like, OK, moved. This is my event. And now, yeah. of course. Uh, my decision function is doing nothing, so I will have to make something more uh, involved. So something like uh, match C CMD with uh, move. And in this case, I will say, OK, I moved. And in other case, I just say, no, nothing happened like that. Great. And no, my, my state was uh, always initial state, but no, I can say, oh, my position I'm not in initial state, I will be in a new position like uh, start it of int or yeah, something like that. And so here I can decide move. So we can run the code first. I will just rerun all that. Uh, and when I run it, I get that I actually moved. Great. Mm -hmm. And now I can uh, evolve my state like uh, if match states and event with, and now I can say like uh, if I'm in initial state and you ask me to move and you moved, uh, then I will be in uh, started uh, one. And if I'm in started, N and I moved, I mean, started N plus N one. Plus one yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, like that, okay? And so we can run it and know, okay, it worked. And if I moved before, whoops, like that, moved, moved, I can just run it and I get started too and all that, okay? This is yeah. very simple, okay? No, I have. I, I can make. I can add some uh, comments and some events. Okay, and uh, I can make my decision function, my evolve function, more uh, complicated, mm -hmm. with more decision, with more evolution, more state, and all that. But the thing is that my this my I have nothing to change in the signature of these two functions. Yeah, nothing. So whatever a command on the state is, I can always call it this way. And this evolved function, whatever it does, whether it's playing crazy farmers and making some hotel bookings or, or making some financial computation, the, the, the structure of this function is the same. So I can use it the same. So from here, we, cannot, we can stop to talk about the complexity of the thing inside the function and just talk about how we will use it. Okay, so the first thing I did is to use it locally in the browser. Okay, so uh, what I did is that uh, you don't see it here, but when you, uh, if you take uh, this, you will notice that uh, around the player here, no, no, this player here, there are some small spots. Uh, yes, I will find them. It's a bit too small. <laughs> Um, so when you pl when you play this online, you can you can take advantage of looking at the past events and all that right in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, That's I, awesome. I yeah, sure, sure, <laughs> sure. 
so this player, ah, okay, my, this is not the right player. I have to, to make the other player move and go back to, to this one. Uh, this will be uh, here. So one, two, three. Okay. And so uh, for the other player here, as you can see, there are some small uh, click targets here, okay? Here and here. Mm -hmm. So when, when, when you are in one position, I just uh, draw on the three other uh, accessible uh, crossroads, a small transparent div, mm -hmm. which, is simply, which simply has an on-click on that, which will send a command in, to my update function in, uh, in uh, Fable, okay? So, as you've seen, yep, I go back to uh, this code here in the client. I have a button and the button is doing, when you click, it will dispatch decrement. When you click, it will dispatch increment, okay? So, and then increment and decrement are used in the update function to compute the next state, okay? So what I do is that the on click of this small div is just send a move command to that, uh, in that direction to uh, that uh, crossroad, mm -hmm. okay? And this is actually a command, okay? So to get my new state, I can do just that. Uh, I can do like something like handle command uh, with my current state, in my command, okay? Let handle command equal. And I can do something like uh, let events equal uh, decide and I will pass my command and my state. I get a list of events and then I can let new state equal list.fault evolve uh, my current state mm -hmm. and the event I just produced. Okay, if there is no events, the result is my current state. If there is one event, I call my able function one. But if there are uh, several events, I get my new, new state after these few events, and then mm -hmm. I can just return the state. Okay, and no, uh, the, this new state, new state. And uh, no, this is a way to just run my code inside the browser because no, I just do it in my update function, get my new state. And then I just do my HTML rendering and I can start to run the logic in the browser. There is no, um, nothing like uh, persistence. There is nothing like uh, uh, broadcasting the output to the player, but I can already uh, test the code locally in my browser for uh, prototyping. So nice. Yeah, and, and I don't know what the decide and the evolve are doing. I just care that my state can be used for HTML rendering. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of how we develop with uh, uh, with our latest projects. Is uh, you follow the thread from the UI, and you can you should be able to prototype as you go, so that exactly. you get you you get to see the actual solution or parts of the solution at that moment in time, how it's yeah. going to act. So I guess it's yeah. kind of uh, an understated benefit of event sourcing is that. You can make a whole bunch of fake events because you didn't bother looking at the game setup and yeah. any of the initial moves, but you can start with the most important, most fun, uh, most uh, engaging yeah. part of the system exactly. uh, because you can fake the rest very easily. The rest, yes. and, then, uh, and then you can get started with exciting stuff, right? Leave the boring stuff yeah. for later. <laughs> and, and, and here I, I can start without any uh, uh, infrastructure concerns like uh, uh, database, Exactly. So that I can I can choose later. Okay, so this is very important for 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 this. And uh, so from here uh, I can start to to increase uh, the decision and the evolution so that it actually does the most important things things in the game. Okay, and at some point, of course, uh, I started to to uh, I wanted to to check that I could actually use. Uh, all this for um, for uh, synchronization between players, okay? So um, what I did is that uh, when I get some events, I also send them to the server. So 
uh, in uh, Elmish Bridge, it's very easy to actually uh, send the things to the server. You just uh, bridge uh, send server, and then uh, you create uh, you you have the structure like uh, uh, events, and then you give the events. And this is just a data structure that you create so that you can send several um, different. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, you keep uh, you, you're not sending all the events. You just have the latest ones that you're sending, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just uh, sending those that has been uh, created. No, but yeah. actually, I, I I did not that. Actually, I send the comments, of course. Mm -hmm. And because I want the server to to know about uh, the comments, so first I just send the comment like like that, mm -hmm. and on the server, I could do something similar, like uh, when, so at first I kept all the state in memory, that was easier. And so you can just do something like late mutable state, equal initial state. So you start with a single game, single game, single state in memory. And so uh, it's very easy, let so you, you create a, a common handler or something like that for your HTTP or here it's a, it's a, not HTTP, it's a, a, a Elmish bridge, so it's web sockets. Yeah. But if you use HTTP, it's also very simple. You just say something like, uh, uh, you do something like let's start and it will return a function. So you just let a mutable state like that, equal initial state. And then you create a function uh, that takes a command. So it will be called by your HTTP framework. Okay. Yeah. And what it will do, it's just that it will do exactly the same that uh, over there. It will compute new events, it will decide from your command and your current state. And it will just do something like the new state will be, the old state will be replaced by, with the list of fault of uh, current state and the events, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, here, I just muted the state, okay? So this is my way to actually save the state. It will not survive uh, a restart of the application, but already I can keep the state and restart the client and not restart the server and it will work. Right. If, if you want to actually, uh, uh, save uh, the state in database, it's totally possible. You can just do something like late state. Yeah, I know so even sourcing people will, will have a, a thrill when I write this, but <laughs> let's take the load state from database. Okay. And then I do that. And here mm -hmm. I, I say let new state equal. And then I can write save state yeah. to database. Uh, That's totally fine state. to do. I know that there are some uh, people that fall in love with event sourcing and they just want to replay events all the time. But these optimizations, mm -hmm. as long as you do them well, especially in production, you have them, you know, some sort of hash functions or a way to ensure that you have uh, the proper version of the state, then you you can do these optimizations. Yeah. It's just like caching is so cheap with uh, event sourcing because you have this predictable um, idea of what the state exactly. needs to be and you can always verify it by recalculating, but you can also do simple hashing and other, yeah. other schemes to yeah. make sure you have the right cached um, uh, image, right? So. There's yeah. a lot of opportunity to optimize this stuff. Yeah, and, and, and but but starting like that, like I save it in a SQL database with uh, with uh, tables and fields and multiple tables and all that will work. Uh, yeah, I mean, of I, this is still the same code. Okay, mm -hmm. just my load state from database will uh, actually load the state and save state to database with actually save the fields of my state to but I, I will lose a lot of uh, interesting property of uh, event sourcing, but still my decide function and my evolve function are the same, okay? Yes. But this is not what I did. The thing I, I did was actually uh, more like uh, let uh, if, uh, loaded uh, events equal uh, load events, okay? 
and then uh, state equal uh, list dot vote of uh, evolve uh, initial state and my loaded events. And then you get your current state and then you do that. And here you can just uh, do something like save events. And, uh, and get them, okay? Um, after that, if you don't want to load every time, you can late state, mutable state equal, and actually you do this once at the beginning. And then mm -hmm. you can uh, save your events, but mutate the state with the new state like that. And uh, now you keep state, you, you compute your state from loading the events, but uh, after that, you can just uh, uh, decide and fold and save the events and get your new state and start again. Okay. Right. But this is still the same decide and still the same evolve. Yes. Okay. And um, so uh, I, I, my first implementation, uh, my first storage was on a, on a, a Cosmos DB. Yeah. So in Cosmos DB, I have a simple uh, 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 envelope document that enables me to to save a version, and uh, that will contain a list of events. And uh, so, uh, if a single command uh, outputs several events, they will all be saved in the same document. Right. Uh, uh, and so, uh, save events were just uh, producing this document and appending it in Cosmos DB. And load uh, was just uh, taking uh, the full uh, event for the single game. So I have a game ID, and for this game ID, loading all the events and running them. And then I can keep things in a, in a memory like that. Mm -hmm. And and for uh, synchronization, uh, what I do is that before each command, I just uh, try to load. Let load. So I keep also. Uh, I use a loaded events and a version. Okay. So mm -hmm. I get a version from Cosmos DB, which is just the number of my last batch of events. Yep. Okay. And uh, so, uh, uh, and uh, my version like that. So I get a mutable state on the mutable version. So I, you cannot write this exactly like that in F sharp, but you understand the thing. And after that, what I do is I do something like uh, uh, let new events equal uh, load new events uh, of a version. So I just asked uh, Cosmos DB for the events after the last one I knew. Yep. New version. And then I fold them to get my current state. So let uh, state equal uh, list.fold uh, evolve and my state and my uh, new events. And so I, the thing is that most of the time these new events will contain nothing because if you were the, right, the last one to write events uh, in Cosmos DB, you already know all the states, but maybe uh, there was an, uh, an other instance that took a command and output some events. And so yes. uh, your uh, loaded states is not the one that is actually the right one. So just try, try to load, but most of the time the, the list will be empty and the run trip will be very yeah, short. So this is about having the non separate uh, instances running their own version of the game yeah. and synchronizing exactly. just on the events. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I, I get the, this new state and from here I can decide and save and I'm ready for the next. And that's cool. And to, for, for the synchronization, what I used is that um, in Cosmos DB, you can uh, uh, subscribe to receive uh, changes in the database. And since all, since all the changes are always uh, insert in the database, it's very easy, you get the insert. And when you get them, uh, you can just uh, use them. So what I did is that um, each time there were new documents in uh, Cosmos DB, uh, I look if there are connected players 
on my container mm -hmm. which are interested in this game. And right. if they are, I can just push the event to them and uh, it will uh, produce in a, in a, a fable. Yeah, so I push the event on the web socket, okay? And so mm -hmm. here, uh, there is, like this encounter, there was uh, an event uh, remote. So this is a message you receive from the server, okay? Mm -hmm. And which contains events. And when you receive this, you just take the event, hold on your current state, mm -hmm. get uh, the new state, and it will render the new situation of the game, okay? Yeah. So synchronizing a user was just sending the command to the server. The server will store, the, will decide based on that, store the new, the new event in Cosmos DB and all the instances of the container will get the new events and propagate them through web sockets to the client that will just use exactly the same function. Right. Decide and evolve to get the new state, the browser and render. So yeah. all the game, all the, all the the evolve and decide function are both run server side and client side yes. on the server in F Sharp yeah. and the client in a, in a JavaScript. Okay. So if someone wants to try this out and they have their own thing, like a lot of a lot of our uh, people that are using our stuff are just uh, spinning up a simple digital ocean droplet, they can have the state saved on disk. It doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. Where they're starting, as long as the key value store at the at the most basic level, yeah. they can they can write yeah. and read files, yeah. and that should be enough for them to play with this. Exactly, but th this is not the the end of the of the story. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know there's that, more. <laughs> after that, so uh, it started to be very interesting, and uh, and uh, wh one thing that I wanted to add after that is that uh, for each move going to the server and then going back uh, to the client, um, uh, make a so kind of lag, okay? Okay. Create lag, okay? So you click, you send the command to the server, the server compute the decision function, uh, will save some event, the event will be processed by the, by the subscription, sent through WebSocket, and only after that, it will be applied locally, okay? Uh -huh. So uh, I wanted something faster, yeah. More, resp uh, more reactive. And so I did this thing and that you can do uh, mostly because uh, you're doing it with, uh, with uh, functional event sourcing. And so to do that, I had to, 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 to use a bit more. So what I do is that I have here uh, my client. So this is the browser. And here there is a server with uh, Cosmos DB, okay? So usually what you do is that you send a command, you decide, you save some events, the events go back to the same container or another one, and I send with, with, with WebSocket, so you have the events here. Mm -hmm. And here you use the evolve to get the new state, and you will display from the state, okay? This is a long run. Mm -hmm. so what I did is that here, I use a structure that says local state and server state. Yeah, you can okay. just synchronize them instead. <laughs> so what? Yeah, what what I do is that when you do when you make any action, I can compute immediately because all the run all the code is on the client. Mm -hmm. I can use decide to get the events mm -hmm. and hold them to get the new state and I can get the new state here, okay? Yeah. And I can display instantly uh, the result uh, of your action in the browser. Like you want to move, I can compute your new position and display it directly without even going to the server. Actually, uh, normally, uh, your client will decide the same thing as the server, so it's not a problem. But what you can do after uh, at the same time is that you will send the command to the server, so just through the socket, you just uh, serialize it uh, through, through the web socket, the server receive it, uh, use the local state uh, to make the same decision as you did, but it will recompute the decision locally with normally the same code. 
Yeah. Uh, I would put some events uh, that it will save to Cosmos DB, uh, get the notification, uh, propagate the events through the WebSocket to the to the client, and when I receive a message uh, containing events from the server on the WebSocket, here I will compute uh, based on the server state. I will fold my evolve function to get the new state from the server. Okay. Yeah. And if when 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 you do several actions uh, in the client, you can have several move of the local state in front of the of the server. So I will just keep it here if I'm several move away in local. But as soon as the look is the server state version is the same as the local state, I just replace my local state with the server state. Yeah. So. If there is any difference between them, I replace the local state with the server yeah. state. And, and okay. of course, this is where you can do. Correction. Yeah, and this is where you can do all all sorts of other checks to to make that uh, more efficient um, with checksums or hashes and okay. things like that, yeah. and yeah. or signing. If you want to make this game yeah, very secure, you, you can have to, to, keys to on the you know six a way to sign things yeah. on the on the on the server. So um, exactly. Yeah. But, the cool thing is that since it's all um, it's all uh, immutable values, it's just taking values, computing values, and outputting values. So there is nothing like undoing or things like that involved. It just takes the values and replace the values. Yes. Okay. So actually, all this code to do that is uh, something like uh, fifteen lines of lines of code. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it gets very simple. Yeah. I, I'm not cheating. I I can show you. Uh, this is in my. Um, yeah, the, the big the big lesson for for game development here is that uh, this this calculation of state like this uh, is it makes things um, very methodical and simple. So it's the same pattern over and over again. You just add yeah. more and more decisions, but uh, it's easy to follow what happened. Uh, so yeah, it's. That's, I think that's why we see React and other frameworks uh, so successful yeah. because they have a one place where you can trace all the changes to. It's four, 14, 14 line long, so it's ah, okay. all here. Even less. So say, <laughs> okay, if the version is uh, more than the version, I just compute my new state from the old one. And, uh, this is, and this is a bit more complicated because I also try to detect when there are some new cards that have been played so that it can make a, a, a momentary uh, display of the card that has been played. And then I can just compute my new model. So the new board is either the local board I computed or the new state computed from the server, depending of, on if the new version is more or less than the current version. Mm -hmm. And then I take the local version as a max in the, of the new version and the current version. Uh, my sync, so this is the server version is a server version and the server uh, here. And I just update the possible move and the new card. And this is all I need to make um, uh, optimistic uh, uh, local, uh, client local um, uh, command uh, execution. Yeah. That way they don't wait. Nice with the server, and I know that it cannot go wrong. Never like that. Yeah. So very very easy to do. So uh, this is a different pattern I used for for the implementation, but this is not the implementation that you've seen here, uh, because uh, this implementation is not at all on uh, Windows Azure.